Hello guys, it's Booty, and today we're going to be focusing on a strategy, uh, let me get this music playing, yeah, keep that enabled. So, uh, in this episode of How to Zerg, we're going to be covering Zerg vs. Protoss, and specifically, we're going to be going over a particular strategy that I have been, uh, practicing a lot on the ladder. I've had a pretty high win rate with it, I think it's really fucking strong right now. And basically... The strategy is, we're going to be abusing swarm hosts for as, as long as we can, as long as they are powerful. Because right now, swarm hosts are honestly a little bit overtuned. They are very, very cheap. Uh, as you can see, they're 175. They're just ridiculous. And they have a lot of DPS, they have a lot of zoning potential. And most importantly, which is going to be the big theme of this episode, they're really good at locking down expansions and starving your opponent. So, and one thing I want to go over real quick is we're not going to be focusing so much on the build order in this game, so much as overarching themes and concepts. So in this game, I got Zergling Speed, uh, I got the hatchery around 2 minutes 50 seconds like normal. Got my queens, and I'm going to be focusing on droning as long as I can. And I'm going to try to maintain vision of this side. So right there we just saw this stargate. And as you can see, I'm immediately responding with a spore crawler. Now technically, I probably could have delayed this for like... Probably like 30 seconds or something. Bought me a little bit more time to drone. But doesn't matter too much. It at least guarantees he's not going to be doing anything significant. As long as I'm pulling my overlords back. Now, he builds an oracle. But most of the time, in my experience, if Protoss gets a Stargate like this, they're usually going to go for Phoenix. And normally, when they're going for Phoenix, they're going for like, uh, 4 or 6. At bare minimum. And as we can see, he is getting Phoenix. I don't remember exactly how much he gets. And yeah, around four minutes, we got a roach worm. We got these gases coming up. Right now, we have only 46 drones to his 40 probes. And around five minutes, we have the layer. Now, that doesn't have to be the specific time, necessarily. Ideally, you can try to get this as fast as you think you can. Around four minutes when you get your gas geysers. The faster, the better. But... I generally like to play it pretty safe and a little bit weary of all ends and whatnot. He went double Stargate. Now I'm starting to realize that a lot of people that go for Stargate generally aren't just going to all in off of it. They're going to use it as a macro opener. Now I should have vision of this, and I do. I know it's there, so I know I'm free to drone. Uh, I only have. And. I should have droned a lot harder than I did. It's always funny watching replays when you make mistakes. But yeah, so the layer is done. We got the infestation pit coming up. We got our upgrades relatively early. Uh, especially compared to our opponent. He didn't even start his upgrades yet. At least not his attack upgrades. Now one important thing is as soon as you see the phoenix... Now... I get kind of lucky here because this guy is... I have a lot of overlords out on the map, and I shouldn't. I really fucking shouldn't. These guys are just begging to die, and then I'll get supply blocked, and then they'll slow me down. Uh... What the fuck? <laughs> that missed rally, though. That's really funny. So... Generally, the magic number is 10. I like to go for around 10. Sometimes I go for a little bit more than that, around 12. Sometimes a little bit less. But 10 is the ideal number minimum that you want for this strategy. And then you're just going to be going for Roaches, Ravagers, Hydralisks. Now, I should be moving my Swarm Hosts very soon. And here we go. I wait quite a while. I think I... I think I was scared of the Phoenix, and that's why I waited so long. Because I should be moving out faster, but... 
Yeah, I think in this game I was just waiting on the Hydras, so I could zone the Phoenix. Which is smart, it's a very intelligent thing to do, because you don't want your- You don't want to lose your, uh, Swarm host for free. You know what I mean? Wow. It didn't occur to me until just now just how passive I played this game. But eventually we're gonna see some action. Alright, so now I have the Hydras to defend my Swarm host. I'm gonna take out these back rocks so I have a clearer path. Alright. I remember this. This guy kinda catches me with this. Which is pretty bad. So now we're gonna position. It's important that when you do this, you wanna get as close to your enemy base as you possibly can. S remember that locusts can fly. So, uh... See the little passive right here? So you always want to try to do it around these cliffed edges. I should be firing them off very soon. Yeah. And here we go. Now this guy is very, very late to respond. And he's going to be losing a lot of probes soon. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Unfortunately, I'm also losing a lot of drones here. I think I lose this base. Or maybe I don't. He's not really focusing it down. He should be. Now, you can go for probes. And I do that sometimes when I do these little locust attacks. Yeah, he's definitely gonna get that. But the most important thing, in my opinion, is to try to get the base itself. Now, I was late to react to this. I should have focused this. I, I definitely had time to focus that. It's great to get the probes, but it's even better to get the bases themselves because not only is it obviously good at slowing down their mineral rate, but most importantly the gas rate. And yeah, I do get this. And his gas income is gonna plummet a little bit. I really half-assed the droning this game, which is not great. I've seen a lot of Protoss players go for this, uh, carrier style lately. Very few seem to go for Robotech. Uh, Swarm hosts seem robust enough to work against most anything, though. Locusts are really good for, like, diving the back line of a Robo army. You know, getting the Disruptors, getting the Colossi. Now, this is like... The first time ever, I actually see someone build these fucking stasis wards. It's hilarious how rarely I see this, because it seems like it would be really good. And here we can see the zoning power of the Locust. Now, I should have kept these closer here instead of chasing them. That was a little bit of a mistake. Because basically, these Locusts are buying time for these Hydras and these Roaches to get out of there. And as we can see, around the time they die, they, these guys get right off of stasis. Now, a couple don't survive, but it's just three who gives a shit. And I'm gonna run. Now, I don't do it this game, but I should be droning. I don't think it occurred to me at the time just how little drones I actually had. Now here we see one of the many strengths of going for swarm hosts. This is really loud, holy shit. Alright, that's much better. So, with a swarm host, obviously you have the infestation pit, so that means you can transition into the plus three upgrades a lot faster. Once again, you don't really want to start your hive until around the time uh, your plus two upgrades are started. And here, we got another locust drop. Just look at this damage. Okay, I don't get much damage down in this drop. But yeah, so... Very strong against the Protoss that's out of position. I catch these Zealots. This guy only has plus one upgrades. I have plus three on the way, so he's pretty... He's in some trouble. Some doo-doo butter, if you will. I got double Spire coming up to try to counter his uh, carrier army with Corruptors. 
And we're gonna see a big fight break out. Honestly... I mean, his army doesn't look that big. The main reason he wins is because he gets out really good storms. And I don't do a great job at trying to, uh, avoid them. Also, I'm really slow on spawning these guys. Like, if I had these in position to zone the High Templar, I probably would have been a lot stronger. Alright, so... This is where a bit of a stalemate happens, where there's not nearly as much aggression. And basically, I back it. I should be backing out, yeah. Fighting that was definitely a mistake. We're about even in supply. And to be honest, I almost lose this game because I was really, really bad at handling my injects. And of course, I don't have that many drones. I should have around 80 at this point. But I was really fucking lazy about that. So what can you do? Alright, we got the fast plus three. So we're definitely outscaling him right now. And we're gonna see an example of how the locusts can buy time. And burrow is essential when you're doing this. Because it makes it a little bit harder for your locusts to get caught out. And I am gonna focus this, this time. And see, he doesn't even know where they are. A lot of players don't seem to expect you to burrow the swarm hosts right now. <coughs> and right here, his income's really, really bad compared to mine. I have a lot of corruptors, I got a lot of hydras. Uh, I should have double... Okay, I don't have double upgrades for my air units. I should, considering I got these, but I think... I delay it because I was so focused on trying to get the, uh... Hydras and Corruptors out. Which I guess is pretty important, too. I guess he's so far behind in income, it doesn't matter too much, but... Yeah, so... Once again, we see the power of the, the Swarm Host. It's locking down the expansions, denying him a lot of income. Turtling with a little bit of static defense. I should be engaging this pretty soon. Just dealing a little bit more damage over here. Remember that locusts... Uh, they scale with the plus three missile attacks. So even late game, they're really good. It's easy to look at the uh, swarm host and just think, Oh, it's only good at... Uh, Applying harass, but they're really good at military attacks, too. Just head-on fighting armies. And real quick, we're going to be looking at a replay where we do see an example of them being used more for combat, less so just for the sake of harass. Alright, now I skipped ahead in this game because honestly, nothing much really happens. Basically, uh, me and Protoss just kind of sit back and we macro. He gets a quick third, I got my quick third. I delay my fourth, I don't think I even get a fourth this game, do I? Well, any well anyway. So, I see he's got this exposed base right over here. He has the Phoenix. But they're all the way over here. I, I didn't know that at the time. But, uh, I I'm getting up my swarm hosts. Got the creep spread going on. I should be having a Hydralisk Den coming up pretty soon. Now this game, I'm a little bit more confident with my Swarm Host, and I do push out early. Uh, which, it can work out, but of course... You always want to be careful about the Phoenix. And yeah, I do push out a little bit before my Hydras are actually out. And we're gonna see... Once again, how dangerous this can be. Now, I don't think I covered this last time, but... Well, it's gone now. But one thing to keep in mind about the Locust is it does have the Leap ability. Which can let you control the Rally Point a little bit better than normal. And we did get that. That was, that was the first aggressive move I've done all game. And it resulted in a free base. Free base. And we pretty much win at that point. 
Uh, this is... I don't even know why I, t I even tried to take this base. That was just cocky. But anyway, Protoss is like, oh shit! Oh shit! I gotta kill this guy because now I don't have an economy and he's just gonna snowball out of control. And now we're gonna see that Locust can be good even for battles. Not as reliable, of course, but they're good for holding pushes like this. Now this gets a little bit close. Because I, uh... Actually, it does look like I do hang on. I don't have as many units as I should. I should have built a lot more roaches and hydras. And looky there! I'm remembering this upgrade. Isn't that great? And, as we can see... Uh, just when he kills off all those units, I got another wave of locusts incoming. I'm gonna try to not... I'm gonna try to delay it until I absolutely need to use it. And yeah, and there I did because I needed to protect the, uh, Hydralisk den. And yeah, you don't ever want to trade with locusts, ever. It's just, don't do it. It's, it's bad. There's no way you're gonna win because they're basically Hydralisks that cannot shoot up in terms of DPS. Uh, when you play like this, it's important to try to keep your locusts on a different hotkey from the rest of your army. Don't like control 1A move everything at once. In this case, it's fine because I pretty much win anyway. Locusts are especially good on maps like this because of the fact that it's so wide and there's so much space between the bases. It's a little bit easier to abuse this terrain. I mean, even spawning locusts over here is not the worst thing. It's not that strong because, honestly, locusts don't really live that long. But I could, like, go in over here, maybe take out a couple gateways or some pylons. And if you're ever playing this matchup and you, you feel like, you know, there's not... You're not very confident in doing drops or link runbys or something like that. Locusts got you covered, man. They are ridiculous. Alright, and we got another game. Another Zerg versus Protoss. Uh, this game is pretty simple. It just opens up with us basically macroing, going for quick early bases. There's not really much pressure. He does open Stargate. I guess he does do a little bit of poke with a couple of deaths, but it's so inconsequential, it's not really worth mentioning. But anyway, uh, for the opening I went pool, yes, to natural, then, um, quick third hatch around 2 minutes 50 seconds. I got it a little bit earlier, which is alright. It doesn't have to be exact. Oh. <laughs> so, like, I, I don't know if this guy was tilted or what, but basically he suicided his unit. Let me back this up. This is kind of funny. Alright, so he comes in with his adepts, right? Arguably, he does the shade a lot faster than he needed to. A lot earlier than he needed to, rather. He comes in, alright? He gets, like, a drone. Then he responds with DT Idiot. I don't even know what that means. He doesn't even have a Dark Shrine. DT Idiot? So yeah, he's going for the Phoenix, and he sees the Overlord, and he's gonna get it. But it's worth it, because now I know what he has. <laughs> okay, this guy just giggles me. I will kill all Overlord of map. Got English, though. I'm like, Kuma. Congratulations, dude. You got, like, an Overlord. Yeah, so much for, I'm gonna get all your overlords. I just pulled them all back to the spore crawlers. I don't think I have... Yeah, I don't even have any overlords out on the map. Right now. Anyway, I have the layer coming up. Now, I know he has a third base. Now, I do see this early, for the record. I see it before I see the third base. That's why I know it's safe. 
Because there are some players that will, like, take this as their natural. And you don't want to get baited by that. You don't want to see this and be like, Oh, he has three bases, that means I can macro. And then he does a two base all in. It doesn't happen much, but it's something to be weary of. And I'm gonna try to maintain vision of all this to make sure I know where it all is. And I am getting Burrow. I know where his units are. I know I'm not being attacked. I know I can just sit back and chill. So I'm getting up a lot of drones. Well, only about 64, but I am saturating these bases. That is the most important thing. I got my fourth base coming up. You should always try to go for this if you're confident. Because obviously early... Uh, a lot more minerals on the gold bases. Pretty awesome. Awesome possum. And I see some adept, so I'm mixing in some roaches. Mineral field depleted. And I get around 10, 12 swarm hosts in this game. How do I see that? I don't even know how I see that, but anyway... Here comes my first attack. Now this one is honestly a bit of a fail. I kind of flop it. I got... Uh, roach speed, I got my upgrades coming in. And I see this, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna attack. But his army is in position, so I don't really do anything. I get, like, a gas geyser. Oh, and then I do this. This is just the pathfinding fail. I was moving half my army here, and then the other half is a little bit too close to the side. Luckily, I only lose a couple of swarm hosts as a result, but I could have very easily lost more. Got a little bit lucky there. You know, I'm poking in Prodom with some roaches and hydras. Roaches and lings, rather. Plus two is coming up. I got my hive. J like I said, just as my plus two starting. Even though I don't even have plus two carapace. I do have, um... My hive coming for plus three attack. So I'm just chilling, because I don't have a lot of vision, I'm a little bit nervous, I'm a little bit weary. This guy's going sky toss again. I'm gonna move my swarm host up over here. Now... It doesn't really occur to me in this game, I do realize it now, but... There is the backside on this particular map... ...that I could be using. And this is gonna allow me to get right into that natural. So ideally, in a perfect world, I'm going to get over here and attack this base, because it's the furthest... It is the furthest base from his army as possible. He does have mass recall, though. But it, it would be forcing him to burn mana, or energy. But yeah, I'm going for the, the third, which isn't terrible. It's alright. I get some drones, uh, some probes here and there. I don't know why he's moving the probes directly into the locusts. Oh, I get a lot. And now he's 66 to 72 workers. I don't get the base, but I do get the workers. And I do empower the gateway, which is always nice. Oh, oh! Okay. So, I see his army moving all the way over here. So I take my Roach Hider army and I attack this. This is important to the whole starving your opponent deal. You want to try to be as aware of your opponent's army as possible and abuse whatever positioning they have. And here I see his army pulls back here, so I go right for his fourth base. I get it. And yeah, the game's pretty much over at that point because I'm also going to be able to deny this base. So now, look at income. Once again, our opponent is far behind in gas. And I should be going for a spire. You always want to try to go for a Spire, as soon as you see this. Now, I decide to fight this, which isn't terrible, because I definitely have the, the income and the resources to make it work. However, I do make one big blunder in this fight. I should have let the Locusts lead the charge. That is the first thing. Remember, Locusts are really... Uh, they're really... Squishy, but they're free. So, if possible, you want to make it so that the locusts are dying 
a long time before your actual units do. And it is taking bad trades like this, I do focus the Mothership Core, which is an important pick. It's a huge pick, because now that destroys any mobility that Protoss could have had. Which means, I can do whatever I want with these 12 Swarm Hosts now. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit scared of an attack, so I pull back and I turtle with him a little bit. I shouldn't even be chasing this. It's obvious he's never going to get close enough. This is just stupid. And I make a pretty embarrassing blunder control-wise. See? I stopped auto-attacking. Because I was trying to move my swarm host, and then I accidentally moved my roach hider army. I do have 28 hiders on the way, though, so it's not the worst thing in the world. He probably could have gotten a lot done if he had uh, attacked after winning that. Or at least go for this base or something. I don't think he was too aware of exactly what I had. Anyway, now I have high tech. I got my plus three upgrades on the way. I already have plus three missile attack. I got my swarm host coming in position. I'm going to make a pretty stupid blunder. The pylon draws aggro. So this doesn't work nearly as well as it should have. But I am drawing pressure to this side of the map. And it is making him nervous about moving out. Multi-prong attacks are an important strategy for this style. So I could be attacking with the, the locusts in one spot, and then attack with the hydras in another as soon as I see his armies out of position. Now here I go for the fight. I know I have the advantage here, because I got the locusts, the corruptors, everything. And I should be focusing the carriers pretty soon. I'm a little bit slow on that, but whatever. I do have an upgrade advantage, so I'm going to win this pretty single-handedly. This time I do let the locusts absorb some of the damage and tank for my army, so the trade goes a lot better. Dropping a little bit of counter BM. That's, that's what you get for being like, Oh, I'm going to kill an overlord. Get wrecked, son. And then he rage quits in like 30 seconds. He gets the, uh, the last second Dark Templar Shrine. And yeah, at this point, I'm just going to take the last base. And he's never going to have enough resources to deal with anything. And yeah, there, well, I don't get the base, but I essentially did. He doesn't have anything anyway, so whatever. I was a little bit slow on getting my overseers in position, because I have all my overlords on the other side of the map. So the DTs get a little bit of damage, but whatever. Still got 200 supplied to his 81. And I think that about covers it as far as ZVP macro games go. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get examples of all-ins. Maybe? I can try. And not And last but not least, we have a game where I'm going to be holding a two-base all-in with this uh, opening. So I'm going to speed it up. Man, I wish this music played during the uh, normal multiplayer. Maybe it does on Protoss, I don't know. This is some good-ass music, yo. Alright, so I'm going to take off the fog of war, or put it back on, rather. So... Alright, so my limbs are coming in. They're gonna scout, they're gonna poke, they're gonna prod, they're gonna be like, Yo, what's up, man? What you building? You better not be trying to cheese me or some shit. That'd make me really salty. And I don't see nothing, so I'm just gonna... Drone. And now I have this overlord. This came in around, uh... About three, four minutes, maybe three minutes, fifty seconds. Suiciding the Overlord to make sure if there's anything in here worth seeing. Now, I was a little bit off. Uh, you can't really do much about that, but the good news is, even though I don't see this, it's pretty obvious that it's coming. Because Protoss still hasn't expanded, and that is the biggest thing here. I have vision of all the bases. 
And one thing I didn't mention that I really should have, um, I actually did have a pair of Zerglings running around the map looking for stuff like hitting tech, proxy pylons, in my experience, Protoss doesn't do it much, at least in this matchup, but it's still worth looking out for, because it will bite you in the ass if you're not quite ready for it. I know it's not as strong as it was in, like, Heart of the Swarm, but, you know, it, you want to deny your opponent any kind of advantage. Now, it's worth noting the time that I got my lair. Okay, so I haven't started my lair yet, but I am starting my gases. Once again, around four minutes, slowly building it up. Now, as far as the benchmark of when you should be doing it, you could just say, oh, it's four o'clock, but it's not just that. Um, you want to make sure you have around... I, I have too many minerals on here. Too many drone minerals. So, it makes sense to start the gases here, because this one is going to be getting saturated soon. It's about balancing out your income. And around 4.30, I got my layer started. This is very, very fast. I basically got it as soon as I could after putting the drones back into this gas geyser. Then, around 5 minutes, I got the roach ward, I got one evo chamber. That's actually probably significant. Um, you never want to get... When you don't see a third, you don't want to commit too hard on uh, upgrades. And I am starting my Roach production, and yeah, I know it's coming now, because I had the Zergling scouting the front. Because I have both ends covered, so I know he can't just sneak up on me. Now he's going to have a Warp Prism, but at this point, I've droned. Now that is the important thing here, because a lot of people, you don't want to overcommit on units, okay? I am being all in, but this is all pretty much saturated. I can use a couple more drones right here, and I honestly, I probably could have sneaked some extra drones in there. But once it's saturated, and I try to saturate it as fast as possible, and why do I know I can get away with it? Because I had the Zergling scouting the map. Making sure there's no proxies, no hidden tech. Uh, the Overlord scouting for warp prisms, drop nonsense, what have you. And I, of course, have the, the spotters over here, so I know when he's moving out with his units. If nothing else. And once I saw the moving out, or as soon as I had this more or less saturated, I'm like, okay, I just gotta make units. And in this case, you know, I have a couple Ravagers, but it's mostly just roaches. And I'm going to overwhelm this pretty easily. And I should be starting an Overseer around here. You don't have to do that, but if you want to be super safe, you can do that. You know, it's it's always nice that um, Corrosive Bile can block out the force fields and take care of it for you. Uh, my opponent probably could have played this a lot better. Granted, it didn't hit very fast, like... I, I was already saturated by the time his attack hit. And he didn't harass or anything, but... This is still a pretty decent example of showing that, yeah... Um... This is a macro opener, it's pretty greedy, and I'm rushing Swarm Host tech. I still have the Infestation Pit. Now, the important thing here is, when you're being all in or when you suspect you are being all in you really, really, really should not be building Swarm Hosts. In my opinion. I think it's more reliable to just make more Roaches and Ravagers, until you see a third base. Alright. Because swarm hosts, well, they're not the worst at defending. Uh, you're usually better off getting these. Because obviously, they're not on cooldown like swarm hosts are. Pretty simple replay, but it was mostly just to show that this can work even versus Protoss style all ins. Now keep in mind, this guide is only... This is specifically designed for ZVP. I can't say for certain how viable it is versus Terran. I mean, it probably would work if Terran's building mech. I don't personally go Swarm Host versus mech, but... I mean, I guess I could try with that, but... It's most definitely never gonna work versus, like, Bio. Bio is way too mobile for Swarm Hosts. 
And as far as, like, Zerg versus Zerg goes, I've only done it a couple times. So just... If you're watching this, uh, just keep that in mind. That this is just for ZBP. You can try... It probably works with ZBZ, and to an extent ZBT, but... Yeah. That about covers it. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.